probably even to today really that like um, an artist's approach to or to make something in response to an event or a situation or to create something specifically for a space and if it's too extreme or if it's too real mm. um, or isn't polished or refined enough um, then it's just dis disbanded or dis discarded you know it's just thrown mm. set aside um, and I think that is maybe what differentiates like Mm, well, what you would hope differentiates like modern, postmodern art from the sort of canon, the history of art is that like the voice of the artist is what's the most important thing as opposed to the patronage. Mm. Um, it, se it seems like in a work like this, it's at that time it's uncomplicated to put all these things together the mm -hmm. story of St. George, the story of Christ, the story of the founding of the town, and yeah. the patrons of the, the, the arrogant. Um, princes and kings it's like all quite it feels like totally natural to put yeah. everything together on that altar piece whereas mm -hmm. now i think meshing those kinds of stories in a contemporary way would be almost unthinkable <laughs> yeah no of course yeah would it makes so much sense i think even like when i was looking through the list of the titles of the works I was like it made so little sense mm. <laughs> how many different narratives are going on but i guess in terms of uh, I guess this is purely speculative, like just off the cuff, really. But just imagining that, you know, you have this centerpiece of an altarpiece mm -hmm. sitting right there, and the work that we're looking at probably is not the entirety of the image, vast as it is. But I guess the function of that kind of painting at the time would have been really the storytelling. Most mm -hmm. people wouldn't have been literate, uh, or it wouldn't have been as common for everyone to be literate. Um, yeah, and that's why you get those sort of stations of the cross told yeah. in like in a linear, yeah. you know, separate in um, scenes yeah. at the bottom of an altarpiece yeah. or like around the edge of an altarpiece so people can follow it. Yeah. And then you have other stories from the Bible. Yeah. But I mean, people will be coming here like, you know, like every, you know, weekly or even more regularly for years and that altarpiece would be there and it would be like the anchor for mm -hmm. like this congregation effectively. And and you know, like the you know, the service would be led through the imagery. So you like you'd be able to refer to at this point this week, we're looking at the mm. within the passage, this text, this painting, and that's able to although scale tiny images from a distance, but I guess, you know, it kind of functions in a way that it can lead the viewer mm. through. Um but that's yeah, I think like the function of the work before, like it would have it would have had to have been like, have, I guess on some level it has to have mass appeal, so it has to kind of like walk the tightrope of simultaneously taking on board like the violence and the more troubling, difficult, hard to stomach aspect, but equally it has to have this sort of degree of harmony, mm -hmm. that it's not like so disruptive or disturbing to the person, that, to the, you know, to the audience. Well, I think that that's also interesting to think about, yeah. because you, you think about um, the level, and when you're describing the, the story of St George, the level of like gruesome, yeah. horrific not detail that would be involved in that story, but it actually feels quite separate, sanitised, mm -hmm. because of the style. Yeah. And think if it were in a more realistic style, isn't there, there's a famous 